All right. Welcome to the latest interview for Energy Matters. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I am so pleased to be able today to introduce you to one of my very dear friends who I've known for such a long time, Joy Selden. She's a master emotion educator and dynamic speaker, and I can just attest to that. I've seen her speak, and she's just riveting. She's also the author of Emotions, an owner's manual, brilliant title, and the creator of Emotions at Work, another brilliant title, which is an, it's an online course. She's coached and educated thousands around the world, debunking myths that hold us back and providing easy to apply emotion management tools. She holds an MA in somatic psychology. And I mean, I, one of the things I would say about Joy is that uh, I, what I see from you, Joy, is that you walk your talk all the time. I have seen you move through your emotions with elegance and grace and just model again and again in so many different contexts what you talk about. So welcome. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. Thank you. I am so excited to be in conversation with you. And thank you for that uh, acknowledgement. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, it's totally from the heart and true. So uh, let's just begin by by saying uh, I'd, I'd love to, to know what is your take on energy? What is energy to you and how does it, uh, how does it apply to the work that you do? I see energy as, as life force. It, it's what we're all made of. It's just, I mean, even quantum physics, when you get down to subatomic particles, there's nothing there but energy. And more and more, I am sensing this um, the recognition that energy is this, emotions are actually a form of moving energy through us in a very, with a very specific message. So I've long talked about emotions as being um, an information system. Mm -hmm. And I, I see them more and more as just energy formulating in a very specific way to bring us information, but it's all part of that life force energy that animates us. That's part of why we actually experience life. Oh, I love that. That's a beautiful definition. You know, I think when, when, when you were speaking, I was thinking that um, of how in Chinese medicine, uh, all disease, whether it's emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, comes from stagnation. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about how that is so related to emotions, because when we stuff emotions, that becomes stagnant. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because emotions are, I, my definition is that emotions are a biological, in other words, they're body-based information system, the purpose of which is to prompt you to action that is optimally beneficial for your survival and well-being. So when we look at, 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 at being stuck, it is an energy, emotional uh, stuckness is absolutely part of that. And it's a big part of illness and injuries and all of that is unprocessed emotion. Could you give us an example of how unprocessed emotion could be this, the seed or the foundation of bigger trouble? Well, one thing is that, that it's um, regulated by the autonomic nervous system, which makes our heart beat, our muscles work, our digestive system. So when people say, oh, my stomach is upset or my shoulders are tight, that's all uh, a biological response of, of this energy in our body. And when we resist that, when we stuff it, I, for example, many years ago, uh, had a mole uh, removed, found out it was cancer. Sometime later, I had a tumor in my leg removed, and it was melanoma, malignant melanoma. Mm. And uh, in my belief system that uh, emotions are all part, part of illness, I actually went on retreat and spent some time inviting what emotions have I not processed or recognized around this cancer. That's and I discovered- brave that, thing, That's such a brave thing to do. I mean, when you did that, I'm imagining fear, anger, grief, all kinds of things must have come through you. Is that how it worked? Yes, lot, lots came through. I, I, I had a sense it was mostly anger. Uh, I have this 
sense that anger, uh, cancer particularly is connected to anger. Mm -hmm. And so I was inviting all emotions and I did feel a lot, but the big one that came out was a huge amount of anger at my father, who I had liked. And, and, you know, my dad was a very mild mannered kind of person. And my mother was the dominant. My mother's the one I had the issues with. So I was really surprised to discover all this anger. And I, I expressed it with harm to none, both verbally, I did writing, I did drawing, I did meditating, and just to work on releasing all of that old anger. And that was more than 20 years ago. And I'm perfectly healthy and fine. Well, that's the best news, <laughs> of course. That's a, I'm, and I've done I'm that more. many times with different yeah. illnesses. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, when, when you're doing it, what is that experience like? Like, tell, tell us, can you get, can we dive a little deeper into what your experience is like energetically as you're, say, expressing anger, maybe you're writing it, or maybe you're stomping around or what, whatever. How, how are you, what, what, what is the experience like? And, and what do you notice in terms of the movement inside of you? I see, and I do define joy as the emotion of connection. Mm -hmm. So my experience when I am connected to my anger uh, or grief or fear, it, it is, it can be uncomfortable, but really it's a sense of being really connected to life. Mm -hmm. And so it may not be pleasant, but it feels like this energy that's inside of me mm -hmm. and that I, when I can express it in an appropriate way, when I, like I'll do a, a meditation where I pictured my dad in front of me, but I started with harm to none. So this is not an intention mm -hmm. to punish or hurt him, but to release me. And so then I just let, let it go. Wow. <laughs> and it's, it's fun. <laughs> and what did it you feel strange, after? but it's actually really fun to express that full energy of that emotion. Wow. And then I feel a release and a sense of calm in my being. After. That's what I'm feeling express, you know, just even as you say it, I just think, oh my God, that sense of after that's flushed out, that must be so um, centering and, and just yeah. feeling like coming back to self in a whole other way. Yeah. It, it, it is. I, my, I, my journey of all of this has the end result has been my relationship with myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, you know, I don't, I, I'm going to get a little verklempt because I'm, this is something that's really come to me lately. And I haven't said it out loud so much is that that self sense of self love and compassion and caring of liking myself has really been and feeling moments of just a free flow of energy in my body in a way I never have before. That is a culmination uh, of all the years of doing this kind of work. Mm. So, mm. wow, amazing. How did you get into it? How, what, what drew you, first of all, did you know that emotion, you know, did you wake up as a little kid and say, I'm going to be an emotions educator? <laughs> Not in the slightest. <laughs> I was uh, very shy and introverted as a kid. I had asthma, oh. stayed home a lot, went and lived in a fantasy world, uh, watching old movies on TV. So I moved to Hollywood when I was 20 to be a movie star. Uh, and I was totally clueless. I mean, I had the drive and the ambition, but I had a lot of insecurity and self-doubt. And, you know, internally, I was just like ah, a mess and um, didn't know what I was doing. And so I spent several years following, uh, you know, pursuing as best I knew how. And I did improvisational theater, which is something you and I share. That was really beneficial for me. Uh, it kind of got me out of my out of my shyness, and um, but I was still often broke and poor and not knowing like how do I ever get where I want to go. And I was standing in my house in my bedroom uh, one day and having this moment of feeling completely stuck, hmm. and standing there literally not able to move. And I heard this voice inside my head say, God does not mean for you to be miserable. Mm. And it was like, oh, yes, 
right you know the, the why am i miserable and why are people miserable and how why am i here and i just went on a journey of seeking and trying to find out what the truth was about life. And in that process, my I think my greatest gift was that I was willing to feel the full range of my emotions, no matter how miserable I was or how unhappy. I would have been times when I'd be going, oh, I'm just, you know, I just feel, I feel terrible, but at least I'm not indifferent to life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and over time, that willingness became, and I started learning more and more about emotions. And then I rec recognized, oh, this is something that is crucial to how we experience being alive as human beings. And in fact, I think everything, animals, plants, everything experience some form of emotion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it just became in my own journey of accumulation of things. And then I had an epiphany one day that that's the work I'm really here to do. Mm. And so this is the work that you do now is you help help, help folks um, be able to experience their emotion, be alive through their emotions yes. and also move forward from uh, any place of being stuck. So how do you do that? What, what is, tell us a little bit about the work that you do or how do people connect with you? It, well, I, I have my book and I have my course, which are all about walking people through the steps of befriending their emotions, mm -hmm. of creating a relationship with their own emotions. In my one-to-one my -one work, in my coaching, because I do do coaching, I work a lot with people in the business world, uh, professionals, leaders, or people who want to be leaders, um, because there's so much stuff in the business world that is uh, a problem because of the lack of humanity, but that's another story. Well, uh, it, but it I, seems like it's not just lack of humanity. It seems almost like kind of a, uh, an old paradigm culture it, it is. Uh, that, you know, showing emotions is too feminine or too, um, you know, that it shows weakness or vulnerability. Exactly. That it's a weakness. It's a vulnerability. It doesn't belong in the workplace. But if you leave your emotions at the door at work, then you leave yourself mm -hmm. and your life and you bring your history, you bring all of your stuff, your whole self into the workplace. And so cutting that off causes a lot of problems. So in my coaching work, which, which focuses on lots of different things in terms of somebody's career, we always start with education. Mm -hmm. So I think of myself as an emotion educator. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what are emotions? How do they manifest? How do you know you're feeling anger as opposed to sadness? And what does that mean? What is the inherent message in sadness, which is loss? Mm -hmm. The inherent message in anger, which is so, so misused and misunderstood. And part of the issue what is, is the inherent we, message in anger? If your life is directly threatened, we have fight or flight. So Fear and anger are our protector emotions. They are there to protect you from physical, emotional, psychological harm. The basic message in anger in our interactions of every day is no, this is not okay with me. It is a boundary setter. Mm -hmm. It's a message that something has happened. Someone's crossed a line and I, my energy this life force energy is going out to set a boundary, both as a protector of what's coming in from the outside, but as I have learned from you and your work with Qigong about boundaries being a, uh, a thing, something that creates a space in which we can function at our highest level. So that that anger that comes out and says, here's the line, it's not about aggression or violence. It's about firmly setting a boundary so that I can think and feel as to what's going on and say, has what, what value has been um, affronted or has one of my, um, uh, has someone crossed a line or something's happened that I, that's against my values or my integrity. Mm -hmm. And so that it's, it's, that's the, the inherent message in fear and in anger, sorry, and in fear, the message is pay attention. Mm -hmm. 
because we get, we go, ah, when we're in fear, it can mm -hmm. be subtle, but it can be that tension that's alert. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. What is that attention we need to pay? Is it on the outside, something that happened, or is it how we're interpreting what happened on the outside? Is it actually coming from internally our beliefs from, based on our history or trauma or whatever, so that it's an opportunity to get really present and think, what's really going on so that I have the greatest possible choice. I really love that. I mean, as you know, and you've heard me say before in Qigong, uh, fear is connected to the animal, the mule deer, which is a small deer. And so as you're speaking, I have this image of the alertness of a deer who hears a sound and it's, and, and, and then it's just paying it not necessarily, I mean, I don't know if they feel fear at that point or not, but they are really, you know, it's enough of an alarm to say, yeah. I'm going to look around, see what's happening and what's going on. I mean, how many times have you come across a deer who's done this alert, you know, yes. pay attention, the pay attention that she's just said. Absolutely. I had many times, cause there's a place I used to go walking with lots of deer Yeah, and you see it with animal with dogs. Yeah, even a cat, a dog will hear a noise and go, they're sniffing, you know, yeah. they're listening because this is where four out of five of our senses, you know, our tactical senses. So we perceive the world through, well, of course we know there's a sixth sense and there's intuition, but there's this visceral physical world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And so it gives, it is exactly that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So how can people order your book? I am, I am a proud owner of your book. I think it is absolutely brilliant. So, so how can they, uh, how can people take they, a look? Thank you. Thank you. And I, as I am, you know, I love your book. I've read it more than <laughs> once, marked up lines, tabs everywhere. Uh, it, it's Amazon, Amazon, it's uh, emotions and owner's manual, and it's in print, Kindle and audible.com. And the audible version is cool because I take people through guided visualizations. Oh, the exercises. Oh, great. There's information. Yeah. There's exercises that can help you release emotions from your past that are weighing you down, even discover emotions that you didn't know you had. Like when you, when, like, like when you realize your anger was not just at your mother, but that was at your father. What a yeah. huge discovery that you it had was amazing. been conscious of. Yes. It and really then after that, I was able to have a really precious time with my father because mm. I had released that. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 I imagine that colors everything. That colors absolutely everything. Yeah. And then in terms, I know you have an online course that I have had the opportunity to take. Really, I mean, it's a way to touch with touch base with you. You do some really important teaching and coaching. So tell us about your course. Yes, it's uh, called Emotions at Work. So it's both how you can apply it in the workplace, but it's also how emotions actually work. And so I've had people from all different professions and walks of life and teachers and artists and everyone take it. Uh, it's now uh, self-guided perpetually so that you can start at any time. Mm. Uh, the easiest way for people to get to it is to go to my website, joyselden.com. And it's J-O-I-E, like in joie de vivre, uh, J-O-I-E-S-E-L-D-O-N.com. We're going to put those links right below yeah. in the comments. And yeah. just find the course and you can get more information and check that out. Great. Yeah. So, so what do you feel is like, what, do you have a story of somebody that you worked with who um, shifted what what happened for them by working with you and really getting in touch with their emotions in a way they hadn't before? Yes, I, I have I have lots of stories. <laughs> I'm not uh, surprised. <laughs> I know, isn't it great? I know you do too. One 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 I that comes to mind is uh, she was a VP in a Fortune 500 company, had had a life threatening uh, experience in her life that kind of undermined her self confidence. And she was kind of obsessing all the time about, did her boss like her or not? Was it okay? And she was holding back a lot. She had a lot of experience and uh, she had some colleagues that were difficult to work with. And so she was kind of in a turmoil all the time. Mm. So we started with the emotion education, creating boundaries, managing her own reactions to things and then beginning to express herself. 
and and she could see things that were not going right in the company that she really could see a better way to do it, started reaching up to upper management, talking to her boss, you know, insisting on the ones to ones he kept canceling, talking to her colleague who was a micromanager and all his people couldn't stand him. He shifted his behavior, not even recognizing he was doing it. After a period of time, the upper management moved her boss into a different division and promoted her into her boss's role. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's a huge success. And I just think about what would have happened if you hadn't been there to guide her through that, right? To be able to set those boundaries and be able to express what was true for her yeah. and make, I mean, it, it improved everything in the culture of the company and her well. And, and her physical health. She had, I was had just physical gonna say, problems yeah. that she got taken care of and that got much better. Wow. Right. So it yeah. shifted the company, shifted her. It's, you know, we really are whole beings, right? So we work on one part and then the rest can fall into place. So in your case, leading with the emotional body is um, key, is pivotal for people. Well, thank you so much. That's an inspiring story. Oh, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for asking. And I, I appreciate being on this. I love you and your work. And it's been very impactful in terms of my deepening my understanding of emotions by being more conscious of energy and to recognize just how powerful it is to work directly with, with your energy. Well, thank you so much, Joy. This has been an amazing conversation. It's, I find it so inspiring. Um, and thank you for those kind words about my work. I know that there's a lot of um, overlap and integration that both of us have learned from one another and mm -hmm. have taken from one another's work. So um, hooray for, hooray hooray for, for friendship us. and <laughs> colleagues. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Any final words that you want people? I want you to tell people your tagline because I love your tagline. Uh, oh, Any final yeah. words that, of what you of you'd like to let people you know get people to think about as we're closing? Fantastic! I I will leave them with my my tagline, which is, "Life is richer when you feel it." <laughs> Enough said. Thank you so much, Joy. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky.